I will uh, start by introducing to you uh, Dr. Samuel Huang uh, from the Gaming and Teaching Research Centre in Macau Polytechnic. And uh, he is going to uh, give us a bit of an update on responsible gambling policies and practices in Macau, uh, where he teaches uh, in the Polytech uh, in the uh, tourism and uh, gambling operating area. Samuel. I will give you a wave when you have five minutes. Thank you. I can stop any time uh, as your request. Uh, first, good morning, everyone. Thank you for to be uh, part of this uh, this uh, uh, this concurrent session. Uh, I'm Samuel. I, what I would like to talk about the de recent development uh, in Macau regarding responsible gambling policies and practice. Frank speaking, I don't like to talk. I like to uh, conversation. You can uh, stop me anytime if you like. <coughs> okay, here I like. Uh, uh, by the way, any one of you uh, uh, have been to Macau? Ah, okay. Some, thank you. M many of them, many of you haven't been to Macau. I will give a very, very brief uh, introduction about Macau is very, very uh, small city, uh, only 30 square kilometers, with a little bit more than half million population, quite small. Okay, and however, gambling has been in Macau for more than one and half century. Actually, uh, we could say gaming has been in Macau since the birth of Macau as a city. Uh, for we could be traced back to the 16th century. Uh, however, it was formally legalized in 1847. So since then, you know, one, uh, 100 and uh, almost 170 years passed. In this 170 years, generally, Macau gaming, particularly casino, has gone through three, basically three stages. stages. First phase is market, a free market approach. The government took the free market approach. In 1930s, around 200 fine stores, 200 gambling shops were there in a very small city. But at that time, the government changed. The government would like to get more tax. So the government uh, offered bid for single permit, monopolized concession. So uh, before 2002, there was, there, there was only one casino operator. But from 2002, the government, at the beginning, offered three permit, and then allowed its permit to have uh, some kind of sub permit, okay, sub concessionaires. Currently, there are six casino operators. Of all of the six casino operators, have uh, has been going public. They are public listed companies in Hong Kong, okay. Uh, Macau has been, had been a very small city and has been a very small city, but the, gro the, gro the gaming industry has been, uh, has been developed very, very quickly. I would like to give you a very a little, uh, little data on that. Just uh, 12 years ago, 2002, Macau's gross giving, giving, uh, gross gaming revenue was only 29% of Nevada and 60% of the Las Vegas Strip. However, maybe just uh, because introduction of uh, competition, uh, in 2006, its gross gaming revenue exceeded the Las Vegas Strip 
and the whole state of Nevada in 2008. Just last year, its gross giving revenue is 45.2 billion. It's, it's, a, it's seven times the Las Vegas. It's quite big compared to a small city with only half million people. Currently, Macau has 35 casinos, almost 6,000 gaming tables, uh, 13,000 slot machines. It's true, Macau ha also has other gaming opportunities, such as horse racing, uh, dog racing, sports betting, Chinese lottery, but all of them are very small. They put together, their revenue is only 0.3% of gross giving revenue. Okay. As I mentioned, Macau, the gaming has been in Macau for centuries, but the pathological gambling or problem gambling issues has not been given any attention until 2004 or 2005. In 2005, Chief Executive Annual Policy Address, this is, a, you know, Macau is a city, the, the top leader is uh, Chief Executive, he gave uh, annual policy address, okay? So this is some kind of guideline for annual policy. Just in 2005, the pathological gambling, problem gambling issue was first mentioned, was first mentioned. And since then, the government gradually put more and more effort, more and more resource to address the problem gambling and responsible gambling issues, okay? And the Macau, just uh, in 2008, they still in, it's, uh, in, the, uh, in the chief executive annual policy address, the government promised Macau will, follow, will promote the responsible gambling following the international best practice. But frank speaking, it's difficult to define the international best practice. Okay, now I move on the, the, the regulation uh, structure will, uh, responsible, uh, uh, with regard to responsible gambling. I would like to mention three points. First, the age restrictions. In uh, following the law number 10 uh, slash, uh, slash 2012, the only adult with uh, 21 years old or above can enter casinos. Before that, uh, it, it was 18 years old. So it's a way to prevent the youth gambling, okay? The second is, just in the same law, the self-exclusion program was officially introduced. What I mean in officially, self-exclusion program exists before that. It was introduced by casino operators and the gaming authorities, but no regulation on that. But according to the law, uh, just in 2012, the new law gave clear regulation. That means uh, at the moment, the self-exclusion program only applies to casinos. And also it's actually, when we talk about self-exclusion, it seems not same in different countries. To my knowledge, for say in, uh, in uh, Canada, if you apply to self-exclusion, you cannot enter the property, the property. However, in Macau, it's only applied to casino. If you apply to self-exclusion, you still can, can stay in the hotel, uh, to go to the restaurant. This, this is quite different. And also, as I mentioned, there are 35 casinos. You can apply for parcel exclusion. That's meaning if you happen to work in one casino, you can exclude yourself from all the other casinos. That's meaning you can still work in casinos, even if you apply for self-exclusion. 
and it can be applied by the problem gambler or their family members. But if their family members help them to apply, it should be confirmed by the problem gambler. Okay. The maximum period is two years, but it can be renewed. Okay. And how, even if you applied for two years, you still can apply to cancel it, to cancel it. However, this cancel uh, request will only take effect after 30 days, okay? It, it is coordinated by the gaming authority, uh, gaming uh, coordinator and inspection bureau, the ICJ we call. And also, when the problem gamblers apply for, uh, for self-exclusion, the one option for treatment referral is provide. That's meaning unless they refuse to be referred, they will refer to the treatment center. Okay, and to my knowledge, uh, the self, the official, uh, or formally self-exclusion program, uh, started uh, November two thousand twelve. 2012, uh, one, uh, around one and a half years. I guess around 300 applicants up to now, around, this is a rough number. Not many people applied, okay. Uh, <coughs> the third uh, reg, uh, RG relevant re regulation I would like to mention is responsible gambling guidelines for casino operators. Also in 2012, uh, accompanying the new law, the DICJ issued re the responsible gambling guidelines to casino operators. I think it's quite important to give detailed guidelines uh, for, say, the responsible gaming training, uh, wellness, and uh, referral, and also its casino operators are requ is request to have dedicated RG coordinator. So at least there are someone in each of the casino operators the, who is responsible for these policies. And also they are request to report, to report to DICJ every year. So they need to show uh, some progress. They are expected at least they are expected to show some progress each year. Hopefully, they will. Uh, this is a, a regulations. Now I move on to the governors. Uh, as I mentioned, Macau is a very small city and it's one part of China, but it is special administrative region. Okay. And what do we mean special administrative region? Macau uh, it was a Portuguese colony after handover in, two, in uh, 1999, and the central government gave uh, Macau SAR a high degree of autonomy. And the policy of one country, two system formula, the central government is only responsible for Macau's defense, foreign affairs, while Macau maintains its own legal system, police force, monitor system, customs policy, and immigration policy. As maybe everyone already know, mainland China prohibits casino gambling. Okay, there is no casino, legalized at least, uh, regulated casino in mainland China. Macau is the only city where casinos are legal, regulated casinos are available in Great China, okay. It's true the central government say Macau enjoys the high degree of autonomy. However, around 6% of tourists are from mainland China. And some estimations say maybe more than 80% of gross gaming revenue comes from mainland Chinese tourists. If the, the central government limit the frequency of mainland Chinese to visit Macau, it will have very important impact. Uh, 
I, I, I would like to supplement that. The central government gave permit to mainland Chinese to visit Macau. Without permit, the mainland Chinese cannot visit Macau, okay? And the central government have been emphasizing support Macau development. However, the central government expect Macau economy will be more diversified. Diversified, okay. So this is some kind of uh, pressure. And also, Macau has been set as the target of Macau will be developed as world travel and laser harbor, okay. And also, Macau has a gaming committee. It should be the highest rank decision making organization in terms of uh, gaming. It's uh, chaired by the chief executive. However, uh, it's very inactive. Uh, for in, in Macau, uh, Gaming Authority, uh, Gaming Inspection and Coordination Bureau, regular and monitor responsible game uh, practice of uh, casino companies, and also Social Welfare Bureau, uh, mainly promote and uh, prevent and provide treatment for to problem gamblers. And also Social Welfare Bureau funding most of the responsible gaming programs are uh, operated or run by uh, the not-for-profit organizations. Okay, and the Education and Youth Affairs Bureau mainly focus on preventing youth gambling. And just two years ago, Macau set up a uh, responsible gambling task force. This, the, the members from the GSAJ, IAS, DSEJ, and also two universities. One from uh, University of Macau professor, uh, a professor from Macau Polytech Institute. I'm the member as the Macau Polytech Institute representative. This is basically an uh, adversary, adversary body, okay. And there are many NGOs involved in uh, the uh, in the uh, in the preventing uh, treatment, okay, and also of course gaming companies. And the in the past several years, Macau has uh, ha has many different prevention and public awareness programs, such as yearly responsible gambling awareness program. And as I mentioned, many local non-government organizations running uh, prevention programs which target casino employees, youth, general, public, respectively. And also the casino operators have adopted different methods to promote responsible gaming. And particularly casino uh, for Macau local government mainly targeted on residents. However, casino operators target their clients, not only local residents. And for treatment, free treatment uh, service is available since 2005. It's offered by different organizations. The first, the Resilient Center is part of the government agency, Social Welfare Bureau. The three others are, are not for profit organizations. Basically, they follow the cognitive behavioral therapy uh, it's free, open to both locals and tourists. Uh, these four centers, they have help plans, but not uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And also they have their different help plans. It's not unified at the moment. And uh, just since 2003, uh, Macau has done uh, several research, including uh, prevalence studies and including uh, studies based by Professor Wu uh, and is here. And what's the impact? What, what, what the, whether the responsible gambling policy or, or practice has done any impact on the problem gambling? I, well, I think 
basically based on the data I have, we could say yes. Okay, uh, the first prevalence stud, uh, prevalent rate study was taken in 2003. Uh, we used DSM-4 and it shows problem gambling and pathological gambling, the last line, uh, the last line. Problem gambling and pathological gambling means three out of 10 uh, items. Uh, has it, in 2003, it was 4.3%, 2007, 6%, 2010, 5.6%. And in 2011, we got 2%. It's true, uh, it's, uh, it, it could be problem, it could be the sampling problem or the data methodology because the, uh, the first three was done by same group, the last one was done myself, okay. Uh, it's, uh, it has been done by different group, the methodology. Could I just ask why you changed the age? Well, as I mentioned, it, it, has, it has been done by different group. And for 2011, the main project, the main task is not for prevalence risk, okay. And uh, to me, uh, I, you know, the youth and the adult are different. So I set the 18. All above. And can you talk a little bit about the uh, method that was used to collect the data, where it's more photo-based? Yeah, all, all, for all, the, all the data are collected by telephone. Okay, and um, I don't see any information on the equivalent of that was very important uh, to yes. know what the response rate is. I bet the response rate to the survey? Uh, to my knowledge, 50 around. Similar, I think, to my to my remember to my memory is similar. All all these uh, all these. Uh, of course, it changed. It changed. It's, but one problem is, you know, nowadays more and more people are using mobile phone rather than lo the 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 land the, the land telephone. However, all the data were collected based the land based telephone. Okay, I, as I mentioned, the methodology issues and uh, uh, sample issues, it is. But still, even if we use 99% uh, significant confidence uh, interval, still we can say uh, it seems at least, okay, the prevalence rate has been going down, has been going down, okay. Of course, it's not enough, and uh, still McCall has a long way to go, but still we are trying our best. It's true, uh, frank speaking, McCall, as I mentioned, the gaming industry is dominant, is dominant, and it's very difficult to change anything, okay? Hopefully, the government will put more and more effort and resource, and the society put more effort to promote responsible gambling. That's what I would like to say due to the time limit. Thank you.